Okay. Okay. Awesome. Hello, disability historians. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I stole your, I'll steal your line. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about Loretta Claiborne. Uh, she is a Special Olympics athlete and self-advocate, doing a lot of speaking across the country. Um, a very interesting character um, with a unique history. Uh, so going into that, growing up, she was born in New York, Pennsylvania. Um, she has six other siblings, I think she's the youngest. Uh, she, her mother uh, fell when she was pregnant with her. So when she was born, she was partially blind um, and had a intellectual um, disability, which I don't know if it's ever, ever specified. I did a lot of research trying to find um, if she specified what, what disability it was. Mm -hmm. um, to what I found, it wasn't. So maybe that's just her decision to not specifically be. disclose. Yeah. Um, but so born partially blind, she didn't walk until she was four years old. Uh, and growing up with a lot of other siblings, uh, sort of developed this, this sort of felt this inferiority um, to the parents that were like talking to her kids and be like, oh, like you're going to grow up to be like a doctor or a teacher. Um, and a musician, and they never really said, they didn't have, like, say that they had aspirations for Loretta. Um, so that really um, kind of hardened her, just the way that she felt about herself, her identity in that moment, um, and was constantly told no in all of these scenarios. Um, so told no, told, like, that she wasn't going to go to school, that she wasn't going to get a diploma. Um, and so that all of these things that are in the outside kind of like attacking her, even from like growing up at a young age, really made her lash out in an aggressive way. Um, she turned to like, uh, she was bullied a lot, obviously, in school and retaliated against that heavily with violence and became a very um, violent, angry person growing up in, in her um, early school years. And it wasn't until she sat down with, with a, a counselor of the school who was, uh, was talking about her um, aggressive behavior. It was after she got in a, in a fight with someone. And they said that you can, uh, your feet can take you farther than your fists. Um, the, the career counselor identified that Loretta had an innate ability for running and was a very good runner and said, hey, have you heard of the Special Olympics? Uh, I think we should get you involved in this and, and sort of put all of that like energy and that um, intense emotion of, of kind of like hatred and, and anger and, and kind of translate that over into, into competition um, and sport. So once that happened, she got on the track and on like the first day of practice, they said, so do you want to do the 50 meter? Do you want to do the 100 meter? What, what do you want to do and that was such a shocking moment for her because no one had ever really asked her and she had never felt like she had that opportunity to speak and use her voice and so that was another defining moment for her um, in her path where she realized I can use my voice and I'm going to start using my voice um, in a much bigger way so that was in 1966 that she started running getting involved in track uh, and then it, kind of just spiraled into all of these athletic accomplishments that she now holds up to today. Uh, she first attended uh, the 1970 Special Olympics um, Games. She's competed in 300 plus uh, local state Special Olympics uh, events in the Pennsylvania area, as well as the six Special Olympics World Games where she has gotten dozens of medals in, in different events in ice skating, in running, in bowling. Um, so she's very talented in, in a, a vast variety of sports. Uh, she's run 26 marathons. She was the first Special Olympics athlete to run in the Boston Marathon. Uh, and she placed in the top 100 women uh, wow. two times for uh, the Boston Marathon. She's a fourth degree black belt. Uh, obviously kind of another way that she took her, um, her aggression and violent attitudes that she had before and, and turned that into, uh, into a black belt uh, pursuit. And she's now in the Women in Sports Hall of Fame. She's been the recipient of two honorary doctorate 
degrees from two different universities um, and was a uh, winner or the recipient of an SB award, which is, uh, I forget, but Excellence in Sports Performance Yearly um, Awards for the Arthur Ashe Board of Courage, um, which courage is an interesting thing that I was yeah. thinking um, I'll get into in a slide or two. Okay. Um, so yeah, going off of that, um, in terms of using her voice, uh, cultivating and, and growing as a, as a athlete and as a person, she, she really wanted to kind of use her platform to um, speak out on advocating for the disability community um, and how they've been wronged by society and, and really just talking about how, how great um, things people in the disability community can do. So she's really gotten international attention from that as well. She's uh, yeah, she's working at the UN in New York, at the Vatican in Rome. She's testified before Congress three times. She did a uh, TEDx series, which is which is a nice, interesting video. Um, I always like the TED videos. Uh, and then was invited to the White House dinner celebration on five separate occasions. Um, this is a picture of her meeting Obama, and this is her introducing um, Bill Clinton to speak at one of the uh, World Special Olympics Games. Um, so, as I was looking into her story, there was just some aspects in which I felt like that some people were taking all of these like inc incredible things that she was doing and starting to like, and like kind of like twisting her narrative into making it of an inspiration form mm -hmm. story. Just one of like the testimonials that, that stuck out to me that, that is on her website is the, the woman said, I, I met Loretta in 1982 and she makes my top 10 all time great woman. What disability? <laughs> so that, just like that phrase of like, what disability? <laughs> but, like saying that disability is inherently a bad thing and, and like um, a person's accomplishments like it's like the overcoming narrative that it's like, despite their disability, not because of it, that they are who they are and they are um, accomplishing what they are accomplishing. I don't think of you as disabled. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Right. And so that just kind of struck me that uh, I don't I don't know how much autonomy she has over her website, but the fact that that is so evident and visible on her website um, struck me. That's interesting. Um, and. Her story got such um, widespread attention that Disney actually made like a documentary, not, not a documentary about her, but they dram drama, dramatized her story, made it into a TV movie that aired on ABC uh, called The Loretta Claiborne Story. And in, in looking at reviews of it, I think, again, that's another opportunity where, where non-disabled people kind of look at the story and, and really twist what the actual meaning and uh, importance is uh, so it says real events inspired installment of the wonderful world of disney exemplifies the courage and determination required of a true hero touted as inspirational loretta claiborne's story is exceptional even if the movie isn't and the message, <laughs> one of overcoming the odds with the healing power of family teachers and friends is perfect subject matter for a family film so really that last part overcoming the odds with the healing power of family teachers and friends there's kind of a couple of things to unpack in there in terms of the healing power, okay, the medical model. Um, and then even more of um, one of the one of the inspiration porn tropes of uh, it's like the the disabled person like not actually as a person, like as an object, right. that it's like, oh, look at all of the incredible things that like the family and friends and community are um, revolving around. Um, so yeah, those were those were just some some complexities that I found within how her story is being told in different uh, media formats. Um, Good point. Yeah, but so uh, overall, um, where we get to today, uh, Loretta Claiborne currently holds um, the Chief Inspiration Officer, <laughs> <laughs> the Vice Chair, Board of Directors, and I needed to make sure that this wasn't just like a fake yeah. title. It is the Chief Inspiration Officer is a real. Um, is a real title and like the description of it was all about kind of like rallying morale around like employees and people in the company to unify
unify around a, a single message. Yeah. So I think that is fitting for her, yeah. um, like her strengths and what she does oh. as a public speaker and her, her ability to, to um, capture people with her words. Yeah. Um, it is just funny <laughs> again that it's like inspiration officer. Um, and then she also is very involved on the board of her uh, local uh, Pennsylvania Special Olympics. Um, so yeah, I think that's a little bit of it. Very good. Thank you for the work site. Yeah. Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And we gotta show people. Hopefully it kept going. Oh, it did.